So welcome back everyone, Triple M here. Today I'm doing my initial setup of the Raspberry Pi 4. Now this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. For everyone that doesn't know what a Raspberry Pi is, basically it's a microcomputer. It's very inexpensive, running around $35 uh, to $50 or so, depending on which version you get. And it has a lot of features. So two HDMI outputs, does have a gigabit ethernet. You can get in a one gig, two gig, or four gig RAM variant. You have two USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, and it uses an SD slot, which you'll use to install your operating system on. So this version I'm using is the Pi 4B. So this one does have a built-in Wi-Fi does have the ethernet gigabit ethernet port another cool thing about this is that it has two hdmi out so that way you can use this as a mini desktop so this is very exciting because not only can you use this as a desktop you can use it for a ton of different things and i'll put a link where you can check out a couple different ideas for this device so you can use it for robotics you can use it as a nas storage you can use it as a server you can use it as a plex server you can even turn this thing into an android box and that's a video that I can't wait to do for you. So what I want to do in this video is uh, just bring around the device, the initial setup, show you how to get everything up and running. But if you have anything that you want me to do particularly, just drop it in the comment section below. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So the good thing about the Pi is that you can purchase it bare bone with just the actual computer itself. Or you can go for a kit like I have now. So uh, this kit I'll link it in the description, but it comes with a heat sink, it comes with a case for it, and it comes with the Pi itself. I bought this kit because it had some of the things that I needed and the other things that this kit doesn't have, I already have it at home. So for instance, you will need an SD card um, to install the operating system on. You also need a keyboard and mouse or something to, to navigate during the initial setup. So definitely keep that in mind. Along with the SD card, you will need something like this, an SD to USB adapter. And that way you can um, move this over to your PC and get the operating system installed. And I'm gonna go through that in a little bit. And this kit is from Vilgros, Vilros. Now this is a mini HDMI to standard HDMI. And this is for one to display. So if you guys are planning to do a dual monitor setup, you might wanna pick up another one of these cables. This is gonna be my actual power plug. So the Pi is powered via USB-C. What's cool about this is that it actually comes with a switch. So what that means is that when you need to shut it down, you don't have to yank out the USB-C, uh, which over time can damage it. So this switch, definitely recommended in my opinion. Here's part of the kit, um, the case, and the case has a fan right here. Also comes with a screwdriver, Allen key. Have some small screws in there. Has two heat sinks, which I definitely recommend getting. If you're getting this pie, and especially if you get the four gig version, definitely recommend getting the heat sink to keep everything cooled. All right, so we also have some more paperwork, instructions. Should be able to figure it out, right? This is essentially the Raspberry Pi, guys. This is, this is the computer. This is the computer. <laughs> so like I said, a lot of people use this as their desktop PC. A lot of people use it to control robotics. This little thing is very powerful. So um, what are we looking at? So this end, we have two USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, Ethernet. So behind the, the Ethernet port, we have the PoE hat header. This right here is the 40 pin general purpose connector. Not gonna get too much into that in this video. So right here is our Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapter. We have the SD card slot right here. And on the side we have the USB-C. So this is gonna be used to power your device. You have the two mini HDMI outputs. We also have a stereo output right here, guys. Right here is actually a, a plug-in for your camera. So, so it has a lot built into this little guy right here. But the first thing I wanna do is just get it all set up and then I'm gonna go ahead and install the operating system. So next we need to install the operating system, but before we do that, we need to make sure that the SD card is formatted. So I use the USB to micro SD adapter, plugged it into my computer. I'll go to the SD card, I already named it. I'll select format, 
and give it a name whatever you want I just named mine pi and just do a quick format it's gonna warn you that everything will be erased go ahead and confirm and format is completed this can be done on Windows Mac as well as Linux so keep that in mind so to get the operating system installed we need to go over to raspberrypi.org so when you get over to that website and I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description as well go to downloads and we're going to install the official operating system for the Raspberry Pi. It's called Raspbian, guys. So you have two options here. You have the noobs and you have the Raspberry Pi OS. Previously, it was called Raspbian, but I guess they uh, changed the name of that. So we're going to go ahead and select the Raspberry Pi OS. A couple options here to, to download. We have the operating system with the recommended software. We also have the operating system with desktop. We also have the Raspberry Pi light the one that we're going to do is the raspberry pi os and then on the download you have two options you can either do a torrent download or you can download a zip file we're going to use a zip in this example so the download itself is about two and a half gigs as far as which or what size sd card you use and i would recommend using at least a 32 gig uh, you can go all the way up to 256 or you can go all the way down to eight but if you're installing an operating system that's two and a half gigs, eight's not going to leave you anything. So I definitely recommend a 32 gig or higher. Like I said, I'll leave links to everything in this video in the description. Now, while that's downloaded, we need to get a software to essentially copy that image to that flash drive. So the one I'm using is called Etcher, but if you guys have something else that you use, I know Rufus, Rufus is another one that's popular. So whatever you use, it does the same thing essentially. So as far as the downloads, available for Windows as well as Mac. I'm going to go ahead and do the Windows download. So all we need to do now is select the flash drive and select the USB that we're planning to use. So make sure you're doing this properly, especially when it comes to the drive, because if you have the wrong drive, it won't work properly. So we're going to go from file and we're going to go to desktop. I'm going to select that. We found that zip file right there. Now we're going to um, just make sure we have the correct USB. Let's go to change and look like that's the only thing that I have plugged in. So I'm going to check it now all I have to do is select flash just click yes if you see that pop up all right so we'll start doing this thing in the background so flash is completed so we need to get this in the Raspberry Pi and get it all connected so we have the operating system installed on the SD card so we need to go ahead and put that in so we'll just turn it over. There should be a slot open. And we'll just go ahead and slide it in. So next I'm gonna plug in my mini HDMI to HDMI. Of course I'll need a, a regular HDMI cable to get to the monitor, but what they recommend as far as ports is when you're using only one monitor, use the port that's closest to the USB-C port. So we'll go ahead and plug that in there. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my uh, USB dongle. This will be used for my wireless keyboard. We'll be using Ethernet for the initial setup, but there's an option to connect to Wi-Fi and I'll show you when we get there. And last but not least is the power cable and the switch is on the off position right now. USB-C, let's go ahead and get that plugged in. One red LED and there should be a green flash and letting you know that it is reading the SD card. Let's go over to the monitor and we'll go through the rest of the setup. Did a couple flashes, then it brought me to this screen. So welcome to the Raspberry Pi desktop. Before you start using it, there are a few things that you should set up. So we're gonna go ahead and click next. You can see it gives me an IP address. That's because I am connected via ethernet. All right, country, I'm gonna go to US. I'm gonna go to US, American English, time zone. I'm gonna do Eastern or New York. All right, we're gonna go ahead and select use US keyboard. Use English language, click next. So it's asking you to set a password. By default, the password is Raspberry. So I would recommend just setting the password, but completely up to you, depending what you're using this for. So now we're configuring our screen. So it's asking us if our screen has a black border. So mine has the border. So let me just go ahead and check the box, click next. And now it's asking us to connect to a Wi-Fi network. So if you didn't set up Wi-Fi as of yet, this is where you'll go ahead and do that. So for me, I'm just gonna leave it for now. I am connected via ethernet, and this is something I can always connect later. 
so now it's going to check to see if there's an update for our operating system so i'm just going to hit next but if this fails or either way i'll show you guys how to do that manually a little bit later so it looks like our system's up to date let's go ahead and click ok and it's going to access the restart let's just go ahead and get it over with so much faster getting us into the operating system also notice that my screen is now completely filled out so let's go around the operating system a little bit now if you click on the raspberry pi menu think of this as your windows menu for anyone that's not used to linux now if you click on it you have programming so all the different programs there you have education you have your office so equivalent to your microsoft office you have internet so you have chromium you have email there you also have your vnc viewer i'll show you guys uh, probably in a future video how to set up vnc on here you have your sound and video graphics games accessories help preferences run and shut down so one thing i would recommend especially if you're using this as a desktop that's actually going to use two screens i would recommend going in making sure that the memory allotted for your video is um, increased so, so to do that head over to raspberry pi configuration all right so you have a couple options here so you can't change the name of the device if you wanted to so default is raspberry pi Maybe you want to name it something else, completely up to you. Now, another setting that you might want to change is the auto login. So right now it's set to automatically log on as user Pi. So you can go ahead and change it. Like I said, if you want to be prompt to put in your password every time, I would recommend changing that. Or if you have something that's running more secure, I would change that as well. You have your display options, your interface. A lot of these are turned off, like I said, depending what you need. Uh, you might want to um, play with some of these settings. I know for sure that I will be uh, using VNC at some point. So let me go ahead and enable that. I know for sure that I will be using VNC at some point. So let me go ahead and turn that on. Now on the performance. Now this is where you um, can up your GPU um, allotment, guys. So right now it's sitting at 76. And for me, this is my 4 gig version. So I can afford to um, increase that a little bit. So I'll just go ahead and I'll change it to 512. All right, now I'm gonna click okay. So it's gonna tell us that a restart is required. I'm just gonna click no for now, but I will be doing that a little bit later. So for anyone that's having issues either updating or they get an error message, you can go ahead and force the update manually. So you will need to go in the terminal. You have two different lines that you need to type in. So let's go ahead and launch it from here. And what we're gonna put in is sudo apt-get update so that's the first one let's go ahead and run it all right so I read the packages found out that everything is good to go i don't need to update and the next one we're going to put in is sudo apt get and this time we're going to put upgrade and this will check to see if there's a newer version to your operating system so everything's up and running. This is my initial setup of the Raspberry Pi 4. I will be doing a lot more videos on this. Like I said, leave your suggestions in the comment section below. I do have a couple ideas in mind, but if you guys want me to do something specific, please drop it in the comment section. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.